Ruiz. Welcome back to the next part of this Truth and Rhythm episode. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. If you've already done so, please share it with friends. Also become a member by joining Truth and Rhythm on Patreon. Or consider donating at funkinstuff.net. Thank you so much for your interest and support. Enjoy. Hey, before we get started with today's show, I just want to draw your attention to new merchandise. Funkin' Stuff and Truth and Rhythm designs are in, and they look pretty darn cool. So show your support, help support the program, and show off some stylish merchandise and apparel. Only at the Funkin' Stuff store. So how did that success uh, change the trajectory of your life? You know, when you had a hit finally. Well, I, I've been through a whole lot of stuff, even after that. First of all, when you become popular, I think another thing I had a group of people, they saw themselves on television, on all the major television shows. They saw, they heard themselves on radio everywhere. And they thought we were supposed to be making more money than we were actually making. It takes time for a special a black act to really build up to making a decent money if he ever does. And uh, in the meantime, I had somebody in the group tell them I was taking them. I gave them every cent they made because I didn't need it. I was I owned the publishing, but they saw me, you know, doing better than them, I guess, and they didn't like it. So we had a lot of problems like that. But then after that, the group broke up and I went and recorded for ABC Dunhill. I made some great records for ABC, but this guy was the over r &B, uh, uh, department. He would not push my records. Even when he knew they were hit records, he would not push them. He, so I don't know what it was, was it something personal about me that he didn't like. But anyway, <clears throat> I think those are some of my best records. Then I got to a place, man, where my royalties all dried up. And I was not making any money. My wife was working at a bank. I got, I got to just jump in and say, yeah, Doing What Comes Naturally to me was a great record. Thank you. That's one of the records I'm speaking of. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, now there's some great stuff on there, uh, big variety. Um, that yeah. I know that album. Uh, you are the one for me. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A Mother's Love. Yeah. Um, that's All That Matters, Baby. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it was a double record, right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of stuff on it, but it was good. I thought it was a great album. But uh, this guy would not push it. So anyway, I got to a place where I wasn't making any money at all. And I uh, asked my wife, who was working at the bank, to see if I helped me get a day job. And she went about that and brought me a man's car who had a trucking company. So I called a man up and said, and, uh, he, before we got off the phone, he asked me, what, what were you doing before? I said, I was in the music. He said, you're not B. Charles, right, are you? I said, yeah. He said, I ain't giving you this job. I can't give you this job. You don't need this job, man. You keep doing what you're doing. 
I said, but I need the job. He said, I ain't giving it to you. And I hung up the phone. Two weeks later, my son called me. Dad, you got a hit record. I said, uh, I don't have no hit record. I listened to the radio and never heard it. He said, uh, NWA. I said, I don't know who that is. He said, they sell me out of the trunk of their car or something. I said, I don't know about that. Hung up the phone. He called me a couple of days later. Dad, you got a hit record. I said, OK, I'm going to go to the record store and see what they're doing. I walk out of the door. The little young guy next door, the little next door, came passing by my house with NWA plant doing express itself and pulled in his driveway. I said, that's my song, man. He said, oh, Charles, you old school. This is the real thing. Yeah, this is the real stuff. I said, man, that's my song. Oh, man, you know, this ain't you. I said, give me that amp. So he gave me a CD, I mean, a, a cassette. I said, I'm going to show you. He says, Express Yourself, written by Ice Cube. I said, well, he said, I told you. So, but I got the information off the record. I called the record company. The lady said, I told them I didn't think they could get away with that. So she gave me Ice Cube's number and I settled the deal. So it's been all right since then. But then I started getting commercials. I mean, the first commercial, I think, was a Burger King commercial. It became a phenomenon. Yeah. yeah. And right now, it's over 100 commercials all over the world. And I just got a call the day they wanted to use it for the Olympics in Tokyo. What? That's incredible. It's an incredible journey that songs had. Like, your life has been an incredible uh, journey. But you know, that, what, what, what was it like when, when you came up with that song originally, though? You know, we talked about the other track, but we didn't talk about when you came up with Express Yourself. Almost the same way. We were playing at Texas a and one night. And uh, it, it Do Your Thing is the last song. And it comes to an abrupt end. Wow. And the kids kept stomping and clapping, stomping. And the only God made me say it. I said, Express Yourself, and they went crazy. I said it again, they went wild. I said, oh, I got something here. So I went to the hotel and I started writing. Next day, I, I got off the airplane. I had finished writing the lyrics. So I started working on the rhythm part, the guitar part, and the bass line. And uh, then I went in the studio and I was having problems with Al. He would not play it right. He would play what he wanted to play. So I, I tried it three times and it wasn't working. So I, one Sunday afternoon, I called Melvin and Gatson, James Gatson, told him, leave me a Gold Star Recording Studios, and we did the track. I brought it home on Monday, called the horn players, put the horn parts out in front of them. They started, and they stopped. They said, we don't want to play on this. This is a piece of shit. I told them, I said, well, I'm going to go get something else on the studio, buddy, and I bet you they're going to play it, and they would be happy to play it. So they grumbled, but they played it. And I took it to the president of the record company. He said, that, no, there that ain't no hit record. That's, that's, that's not a hit record, Charles. I said, put the record out, man, it's a hit. And uh, we were playing in a nightclub in Detroit, the owned by a disc jockey. And the first two copies came. I gave him one. He went his office. He came out. He told me, I think you made a mistake this time, Charles. He said, but well, you got to do such a good job for me here. I'm going to play it and see what happens. Nobody liked it. I ran to that disc jockey 15 years later at a convention. I told you it was going to be a smash dinner. I said, yeah, man, you sure did. <laughs> then I got to kick myself in the butt for telling them yes. But nobody well, liked to express itself. Well, when, when and how did it finally start zooming up the charts? Immediately. Immediately. It went, it, I know it was number one, but they, they wouldn't let the watch band go beyond 11. Hmm. 
um yeah number i i have number three r and b and then uh, over, over, over that one on the chart on the major charts yeah i mean it's such a great classic track and um thank you yeah uh, I never get tired. It's one of those ones, you know, you never get tired of hearing, you know, at least I don't. That's funny when nobody liked it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe a little ahead of its time, you know, because look how it got revived. Well, I guess maybe so. You know? Well, I think when people ain't, here's, a, see, like my band, they were a top 40 band before. You know, I trained them to be studio musicians. They didn't know nothing about anything besides what they heard on the radio. So I think that was part of that problem. Other people, I guess, just something new, sometimes just don't sink in. But that, but people, they loved it, took off right away. And that album also had I Got Love, another track yeah. I like a lot. Well, thank you. Uh, but is it true, Charles, that they didn't put other singles out off that record, only Express Yourself? Yeah, that's true. That seems odd to me that they didn't try to have follow-up singles. Warner Brothers have been trying to break into the R&B business for at least 15 years. They had put out a lot of records by Bobby Bird and people like that. But nobody did. Then they was, I broke them into the business, and after that, they were through with me. That's all the way I can see it. Because they, they just started acting strange, and I wasn't happy there anymore. Hmm. How much? How much did uh, the environment, you know, um, affect the music that you created? in its sound and also lyrics and themes, you know, were, were you affected a lot by what took place in Watts in the sixties and, and then civil rights and how did that affect your, your art? Um, yeah, that had, that's affected too, yeah. Uh, that was a heavy deal taking on that name. It was really a heavy deal. Because after a while, if you ain't got a hit record, Nobody want to hear from Watts. You know? That's just the way it is. Yeah, I tried to be effective as far as uh, bringing people together, but um, I might have been a little stark the way I did it. Uh, I, my, one of my favorite songs still, and probably shouldn't be, is Comment. Uh, I did it one day on television. Next day, everybody did it. Les McCann, uh, Ray Charles, uh, Wilco, uh, uh, Del Reese, Man Amber. A lot of people did the song, but nobody had to hit because of what it was saying. And uh, I, I guess that's the reason. They love the mel melody, but not the words. <laughs> yeah, that was out in 69 on the uh, In the Jungle Babe. Yeah. That was a good record, too. I mean, we didn't really talk about it, but it must be your thing. Good funk track, Loveland, we, we mentioned, and Till You Get Enough. Yeah. Um, and that version of Everyday People. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a... That was a really good album. Thank you very much. Uh, the Joker. Yeah. I just saw something the other day. The Joker with the Nicholas Brothers dancing to The Joker. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. It looked yeah. like they were really dancing with it. Absolutely. <laughs> and you'll find anything today nowadays. Uh, yes. If you, if you flip around on YouTube long enough. Yeah, they got a lot of stuff out there. So when, when you got off uh, and did your own uh, solo deal with, um, first with Warner Brothers and then uh, with ABC, what what did you seek to to change from how it had been with the band getting billing too? Did you 
did you want to have a different sound or different um, image or, or just continue the same? What I do is what I do. And uh, I, I wasn't necessarily trying to continue or anything. I just put out some music, some new music. I do that today. I, I have a record out right now. You know, um, I, I just, I just like recording and playing and writing songs and playing music. That's what I do. And right now I'm on a quest because I feel like they're taking the emotion out of the music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm trying to re interject it back into the music. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'm trying. Uh, it should because uh, a lot of this stuff, when you get to electric, it's not human anymore. That's why people becoming so mean and evil today. They want to fight. They want. They don't want to act right because we're not getting human spirit fed to us anymore. Very much of it. Now, that might sound strange to you, but I promise you, I believe it's true. Well. I think it depends on the type of music that you like best too. I mean, for me, really being a funk, jazz, R&B fan, it's got to be organic, you know, and it's got to be produced by people that have actual musical talent. <laughs> so. But that's what I'm talking about. With, you know, again, people look at how all the, the how contrast people are as far as getting along with each other anymore. People are angry. People are angry today and they don't know why. And I honestly and truly believe it's because we don't have earth, wind, and fire. And, and groups like that are music that, of that caliber anymore. I, I have no question that, that there's still a sizable audience out there for that too, but that the industry has sort of pushed it out, you know? So right. You're so right. That's exactly what it is. Uh, business and kills the music. And, uh, and uh, yeah, the, the spirit in the music. And without the spirit, what is it? What is it for? Yeah, so You've continued to make all these records. Um, and <clears throat> what do you use for inspiration in general, Charles? What in your life gives you inspiration to create the music that you keep creating? I throw away a lot of stuff today. I have ideas and I ask myself, what's the use of putting this together? But, um, I'm always inspired. Something come to me, some words or something that I know will make a great song. And then uh, I got a piano in there. I got guitar in there. You know, I can sit down and, and work out a song. But, but sometimes when it gets so depressing as it is today, the music industry, I mean, if I put something out, Who's going to hear it? Because they, they categorize you. And uh, you, you said on the beginning of this that I was a funk uh, musician and all that. When people ask me what kind of music I make. I don't give a category. I tell them I just make good music. Yeah, no, I mean, Really, those genres are just uh, a way of giving some idea of influence and style, but it's certainly not all encompassing. It's a great way to put somebody in a box. Well, yeah, we don't want to do that, but, but uh, all the time, you know, but, put you in a box and you can't get out. Whatever, you know, that's why this is called truth and rhythm, you know, rhythm encompasses all of that so I, I, I can't disagree with that yeah <laughs> that's, that's why i went with that 
um, so uh, you had a, a long uh, relationship and um, creative uh, endeavors with Johnny Guitar Watson, right? Yeah, yeah, Johnny Guitar Watson, great, great musician, great creative artist, a little misdirected, but great as, as an artist. I don't know anybody better. Do you? Oh, he was so multi-talented and multi-instrumentalist. A lot of people, I don't think, understand the full breadth of all that. No, they don't know what Johnny could do. He sounds like Oscar Peterson on the piano. You know, he was just fantastic. Yeah. And, and the way he reinvented himself, too, later on. And... Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he could play anything from the blues to pop music, so he's, well, those are categories I'm, I'm trying to get for it, but he was one of the best. I had uh, Emery Thomas on the show, and, uh, you know, he, of course, uh, you got, I'm sure you, you know Emery, right? He's over here days old yesterday in my house. Oh, okay, there you go. Is he still uh, over at UCLA? No, he retired. Oh, all right, well, hope he's happy in what he's doing. I haven't talked to him in a year or two. Yeah, but well he's, he wants to play drums with me. Uh, uh, we're gonna see. In the 60s, Johnny Guitar, Watson, and Larry Williams produced uh, Little Richard. Some great music on Little Richard. I don't know if you ever heard it, but uh, uh, I was the guitarist on all of that. And I, I did some other things with him and Larry, but I don't remember doing anything strictly with guitar. Uh, we were just friends, basically. I have total respect for his musical ability. Yeah, I regret that I, I never got to see him perform live. Oh, man, you did. You missed it. Hmm. Uh, yeah, he he's a great performer. <laughs> you can go on YouTube. Yeah, no, I've seen footage. Yeah, yeah. Actually, he was fantastic. Uh, well, I think he passed away on stage, right? I mean, that's yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I was talking to um, you were talking about how you parted ways with ABC in the seventies, and I was talking to uh, Ricky Vincent told me that uh, he hooked you up with uh, that lost record. Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, I got here someplace. I don't think I have it on the table right now. Yeah, he, he, he found the album on a A track and he made a disc for me and he brought it to me. That's a wonderful thing he did, man. Cause I hadn't heard that album since I did it already. That's yeah. great. You know, uh, Somebody else, a guy from Germany, just sent me a copy of it on the web. So, hey, at least there's two copies survived. It got burned up, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it's funny. I run into a lot of musicians who have been in it for, you know, decades. And it's not uncommon to have sort of lost some of, you know, your own music. I had uh, George Clinton over one time and I had some of the older recordings of his and he asked me if he could have my recordings of it because he didn't have them. I was like, of course, here, take it, you know? You had it. I had some recordings of George Clinton's, yeah, that I gave to him because he didn't have them anymore. Interesting. Yeah. 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 So glad to do it. I mean, you know, um, so... How is it that you have been such a jack of all trades, if you will, like this Renaissance man who gets into so many things, uh, books and TV show and music and? Well, you have to do something. <laughs> you know, some people have to stay busy. I, I try. I'm not a busy body, but I try to always be productive. You know, uh, that's what God put me here for to do something, you know, not to do nothing. So 
I don't know how you know about my TV show. Uh, yeah. You seen some of them? I saw a little rich speaking of little Richard. Yeah, I saw the yeah. clip of, of of you talking to him on Express Yourself. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I did about thirty five shows actually. Uh, I'd say at least half of them were really good. Uh, some of them, <clears throat> I had people on that didn't really have the personality to make a show blossom, but I had, I had some pretty good things. You, did you ever hear The Dreamers? The group? Richard Berry and The Dreamers. Richard Berry. No kidding. Oh, man. Richard Berry and The Dreamers. Is that is is that do up? Yes, the greatest. That's some of the first records I bought. That and Jess Bell, man, they ruled this town. Dreamers were only about 14, 15 years old, but they could sing like songbirds. And Richard Berry is the king of what he was doing. Look him up, man. Richard Berry and the Dreamers. Look up Daddy Daddy together. Uh Wait for me. Oh, they made some great records. You know, that's a shame. I don't know how old you are, but you ain't heard the stuff right here in LA that was here that was great stuff. Yeah, well, my musical awakening started in like the late 60s. So I would have to go back to hear the doo wop stuff. Yeah, okay, you young man. You're too late for that. Uh, but man, Richard Berry and the Dream was trying out. It'd be on YouTube. Uh, yeah. I know the harmonies back then were just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, still going out on the corner shooting each other. We go out on the corner and stand on the light pole and sing harmony. That's, that's living. I mean, that's what it's all about. Yeah, too bad those days are gone. Yeah, yeah. Be, can't retrieve them. But singing harmony is much better than killing each other. <clears throat> <laughs> um, so what's what's next for you? What what do you got plans? Uh, it's first off, we're we're so glad that you are still. I assume in, I mean, you look good and you seem to be doing well and that's great, fantastic. And hope that you're gonna continue and, and do some new stuff. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm about to make some videos in the next couple of weeks uh, of, of some of my songs. Um, one of them is gonna be in the new album. It's called Remember That Thing. I got some ladies of fan dancers. I know you don't know what that is. Fan dancing? They, yeah, they dance. It's like a uh, Asian thing, dance, right? No. No? No. They dance to uh, soul music. Oh. They clicked it. They clicked those fans together at certain intervals. Okay. Click, uh, yeah, I see it. So I'm doing a video of those ladies. And I got another one. One of the ladies got a hell of a <clears throat> rump on him. <laughs> and I got a song called The Funk Junk in Your Trunk. <laughs> I'll do a video on that one. So those are two of the things I'm doing. And I'm putting this album out on the 15th of next month called Taking It Back. And where are you taking back? Real music? I'm taking it back to when it was real and right. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, how will, I mean, is it going to have a little bit of everything in terms of flavor? It's going to be comparable to all the other albums I made, like the ones on ABC. It's going to, yeah, it's got a variety of music. It does, yeah. What I, I really like about the ones you've continued to make, uh, Charles, is that you still have so much music on them that's danceable, you know? 
yeah uh, a lot a lot of a lot of acts as they get older they start only doing slow songs and oh, so no that ain't the case here <laughs> no it's at least 60 40 with the fast songs the dance song uh dominate yes that's what i do mm -hmm. And I'm a doo wop man too. Right. Yeah. And are you going to perform some more? Or? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do some performing. I'm going. I'm putting my band back together right now to to uh, go and do some local stuff and try to promote my album and. Uh, just do some local stuff, but I don't know about traveling all over the place. Every time I go across the sea and come back, I got to sleep three days, something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I call it jet lag. Of all, of all the music you've created, do you have one or two songs that are your favorite? They're all my children. I love them all. I would say, I, I don't want to have any favoritism on them, but I got to express itself. It, it takes just and took over. It's not necessarily my favorite song, but it, it serve, certainly serves a, a certain purpose of keeping me alive, <laughs> you know, because if I had to depend on the rest of them, I have a problem. Mm. Yeah. God's in charge. So how can people keep up with what you're doing and uh, buy your stuff and all that? Expressyourself.net. That's my website, expressyourself.net. Or you can go to Amazon, you can purchase my book, or you can purchase... This, this is the original book with the original cover. We changed the book because when, uh, after Trump got in, I figured we ain't come up too far. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, too true, too true, yeah. I renamed the book to Still on the Road to Freedom. But you can order this or order Still on the Road to Freedom. Uh, you get the book at any rate. Says the same thing here. And Mr. Trump can of change stuff around. Yeah. Well, thank goodness we're past that. Upward and onward, I hope. I don't think we passed that yet. Well, past some of that. <laughs> okay. <You> got <laughs> we got we got a long road back, but yeah. Yeah, we got some of the stuff out of the way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about the shot? I got mine. Mm. You know, I want to. I want to feel as uh, safe as I can when I travel and go out places. And, yeah, yeah. You know, why you didn't get it? No. I think I beat it three or four times. Really? Mm -hmm. So you should be good then. Hopefully, moving forward with it. I put the program on Facebook so people could see what I did. You know, a lot of people don't think I'm silly. But I went through some stuff and I came out all right. Did you feel poorly? Feel what? Did you feel poorly from it at some point? Uh, well, the main thing is not to let it get you down. I didn't know to let me get to get me down. <clears throat> well, I feel like in talking to you, Charles, just your whole life and career has been about, you know, overcoming odds and uh, <laughs> overcoming, overcoming obstacles and overcoming naysayers and uh, hard heads, you know? Yeah. Well, you're right, man. I've been I've overcome some obstacles in my life. But your God is good. Yeah, I, feel, I feel fine right now. I hope to stay that way. And if I don't, you know, I've lived a life and I've and, uh, 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 come a long way and I've lost a lot of friends, man. Lately, as a matter of fact, 
I'm trying to put together a service for one of my friends right now, a uh, recording engineer <clears throat> that I used to use who really understood me. His name is Lenore Jackson. He passed the other day. He put up a big fight with cancer. Mm. And uh, uh, I mean, I lost the, the guy that, one of the guys in the group I was telling you about in the back of the bungalow. You know, I just lost him three or four weeks ago. Um, one, that's the one I kept in touch with. All the rest of them are gone. And uh, I'm, I'm blessed to be here. So, yeah, I'm thankful for every day. And um, like you say, I'm going to try to keep on keeping on. Yeah. Well, yeah. glad you are and glad, glad you're making it through. And, um, you know, uh, it's good to see your videos on Facebook too. So, you know, you got to, uh, show everybody that just because you've been around for a while, you know, you're still, uh, current and still kicking and still doing it. So, and this will help get that word out too. So. Thank you very much. Um, uh, you watched my videos, huh? <laughs> yeah, you bet. I do my research and anyway, I love the music. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, it's great to make your acquaintance. Thank you for doing this. Much appreciated. Yeah. Maybe someday we'll meet in person, man. I'd enjoy that. I mean, I certainly miss being, you know, my hometown there. So. Yeah. Well, if you come back this way, let me know. All right. Sounds like a plan. All right. I'm gonna let you go. Pleasure right. talking to you. Take good care. God bless you and your audience. Thank you. God bless you too. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Truth and Rhythm. A big thank you goes out to our guest as well as to you, the viewer and listener. Also, much gratitude to Pleasure for supplying the show's funky opening and closing music. As a reminder, you can always access the complete list of linked shows by episode at funkinstuff.net. I urge you to support this program and receive the extra benefits along with that by subscribing to the Funk and Stuff channel on YouTube and sharing it with funk, R&B, and jazz lovers, joining Truth and Rhythm's membership program at Patreon, submitting a donation at funkandstuff.net, buying Everything is on the One, the first guide to funk book at Amazon, shopping at the Funky Things store for cool merchandise at funkandstuff.net, and linking through funkinstuff.net for all of your Amazon purchases. In addition, if you're an artist or anyone seeking proven results-oriented professional marketing, PR, writing, or editing consultation or production, check out the media services section at funkinstuff.net. Also, I encourage you to drop me a line at scottg at funkinstuff.net. I love the feedback, suggestions, guest requests, appearance and sponsorship inquiries, and just talking about my favorite subject, groove-based music. For now, and as always, this is Scott Dr. GX Goldfine saying, keep on keep vibing on to the rhythm of the one.